This is the second video of this um, circuit. The first one, we found these two additional conditions. We also found that for t tending to infinity, the current is going to be zero. So I have a feeling for the current value for all time before zero and for time tending to infinity. So, really, so the question really is what happens during this time between zero and infinity? Um, and these are the two uh, power supplies that are active, even though this power supply is active for t larger than zero, u of t is one, so one minus one is zero, so this power supply gets turned off, goes to zero volts. And this power supply is on, but we're gonna draw this circuit in time domain, so the, the Laplace uh, transform for this is gonna be five over s minus two. And then we're gonna use the um, initial conditions to add to the circuit. And now we see here, this is where uh, the nodal versus mesh analysis comes into play. Midterm two, the second question on power. A lot of people used uh, mesh analysis um, and got in trouble because they had four equations. So that was a nodal analysis question, actually. Um, this one, however, has two meshes. So, you know, uh, two currents if we do the two meshes. But if we're going to do a uh, nodal analysis, let me see, all this it, uh, could be ground. There's one here, two here. And if I add, actually, these two I can add, but I'm going to add power supplies. Um, by adding power supplies, I add more nodes. Mm, so possibly nodal analysis is going to be even harder uh, than the two meshes if I add power supplies in series. So I'm going to add voltages in series with uh, both of my uh, storage elements, so with the capacitor and the inductor. So in S domain, this is how the circuit will look like. So this power supply is going to be off, so I'm going to draw that inductor here. And I'm going to draw a voltage supply, and this is the usual um, direction of the voltage supply that's in series with the inductor, and this is the usual direction of the voltage supply in series of the capacitor. So these are actually usually um, the opposite of each other. This is VO over 2. This is 1 over S. This is 1S. One this is 1. This is 2. And now the power supply here is uh, 2.5 over S. And now here the power supply is minus 1. If it were a current supply, it would be minus 1 over S. But because we're making it voltage, we multiply by the impedance times S comes up to be minus one volt. So now I have two meshes and I can do mesh analysis. So this will be I1 and this will be I2. And really in the end, I want I0. So really thinking ahead here, the I0 is gonna be the um, inverse transform of I2. I also wanna Make sure I know V naught here. The reason is um, I'm going to use V naught over 2, but V naught is the 1 ohm times uh, times I2. So really I can interchange. I can, I can use for V naught, I can use I2 here, so that my two mesh equations will only have the two variables I1 and I2. So K... Mesh I1, KVL. I'm going to start in the bottom left. That's just like what we did in uh, 285. It's going to be minus, minus 5, S minus 2, plus, 
And now everything that has I1, I'm summing here 2 plus 1 over S. I1. And now everything that has I2, I'm going to subtract. And it turns out this is also I2. So it's uh, minus um, 1 over S. Oh, minus half I2. So it should have really been plus uh, v, v, uh, 0 over 2. And then I'm still needing this guy here, plus 2.5 over s equals 0. So this is the first um, equation. And one thing I, would, I will ask you to do in the uh, final exam is to make, for example, the system of equations if you're not going to isolate i1. So it's going to be 2 plus 1 over s, this, and then um, half minus 1 over s. So, in, and then we'll have another two numbers here, times i1, i2, equals, um, in this case, it will be 5s minus 2 minus 2, 0.5 over s, and then here I'll have another number for the second mesh. So, so this is the kind of system of equation I would uh, be grading you on. And now let's do the second mesh. Um, mesh I2, I'm also going to do KVL, knowing that uh, obviously I2 is the uh, thing I'm after here. Um, so I'm going to start again minus I2 over 2 minus 2.5 over S um, plus 1 over S I2 minus I1. I see it's going to take me longer here. Um, plus I2 I2 plus 1 S I2 plus 1 equals 0. Now really, I'm going to get uh, all the i1s uh, out, which are um, minus 1 over s, and then all the i2s out, which are, are minus half, plus 1 over s, plus 1, so it's half, minus 1 over s, o plus s. That doesn't look good, huh? Equals 2.5 over s minus 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I must be missing 1. Oh, no, I merged the two numbers. I merged minus half plus 1. So it's 6 terms. So this is a, maybe a little bit nicer written. This plus s here uh, could have been better. So, so this would be what I'm asking you to uh, end up with uh, on the exam. Obviously, the next step, and I don't expect you to. Uh, well, if you have a good calculator, um, it's not the inverse transform. Isolate get um, i two equals something, a function of s, and then inverse transform to get um, oopsie, i of t. And in this case it's for t larger than zero, but then we already know the, the less than zero is minus one. And in the end, you get to uh, a sine wave multiplied by uh, an exponential, um, which means the sine wave really does something like this. So it goes to minus, it's minus one in here, something like this. So there is an exponential there multiplied by the sine wave. So the current goes up, down eventually goes to zero. 
Um, so this is I and this is T. This is it. Oh man, it's a long video.